again, the Power BI Learning Community is officially sponsored by Enterprise DNA and um, powered by YobiZ. So Enterprise DNA is um, a data firm and they're mostly into Power BI and data analytics and empower everybody to be to, to get more Power, Power BI users, uh, which can help you in your business. So they have learning courses, they also have events like currently there's a challenge on undergoing which is the sheets utilization reporting. So you should check it out. Then your business is also a Microsoft Excel consulting, financial modeling and enterprise solution firm in Nigeria. And we currently have classes going on on these topics. And these are the this upcoming calendar and our candidates for each training session. Um, today, um, Donna will train us about how to analyze our LinkedIn activities using Power BI. She has a master's in marketing, she started work a career in Excel, but today she's an MVP and she's also someone that's very highly skilled in Power BI. And at the end of this session, um, she will either, either, either be either discovered maybe new ways or more effective way of using Power BI and also deepen your DAX and Power Query knowledge. So, hello, Diana. Hello, Ivani. And hello, everyone. <laughs> Thank you for having me today. So, we are over to you now. <laughs> Pleasure to have Okay. Should I share my screen? Yes. Yes? Okay. So as Ifani said uh, earlier, I will be showing you how to analyze your LinkedIn activity using the Power BI tool. Okay. So my name is Daniel Mamodeli. I am a consultant and trainer in Power BI. I currently work in Capgemini in Barcelona, in Spain. Uh, you can add me on LinkedIn. There is no problem at all. You can contact me. I will do my best to, to answer your questions. You can also follow me on Twitter. I, I give you my website in case you're interested in following what I am doing. But I have to tell you that my website for the moment is only available in French and in Spanish. Um, I am also the founder and co-organizer of the Power BI user group uh, in Barcelona, where I used to organize events uh, like this one today. So what are we going to, to do today? Uh, first of all, I would like to introduce you to the concept of uh, GDPR and the uh, Power BI. In case of uh, one of you, um, in case of some of you are beginners in Power BI, so that you will be able to follow this session. So then, the the following step will be to connect uh, to connect to to the LinkedIn data. So I will show you how to how to get the data of your LinkedIn. Then we will have to clean and transform the data in Power Query to be able to explore the data and uh, to be able to, to create visualization. So these are the two next steps. We will create the data model and then we will create visualizations and uh, we will try to, to improve a bit the design of the, of the report. If you have any question, feel free to, to ask and uh, I will stop and I will try to answer. Or you can keep it for the end if you want. Hi, Dhani. Uh, good night. Yes, good evening. Uh, can you recap once again? I had just joined. Can I recap what? Sorry. Okay. Yeah, what will the agenda? What we will do in that session, live session? Yes, OK. I will repeat, no problem. So I will start by explaining what is GDPR. This is a law to protect the data mainly, and uh, then I will explain very briefly what is Power BI. Okay. Then I will show you how you can yourself uh, get access to your LinkedIn data so that you can replicate what we will do today. You will be able to do it uh, on your side, okay, when you will have your own LinkedIn data about your profile, okay. Once we have the data, we'll have to clean them because the data almost never comes uh, clean enough to be able to be 
um, used in Power BI. So we will have to transform and clean the data. Once we have cleaned the data, we will create a data model. So this is the relationships uh, between the tables that um, will enable us to create a more consistent report, create a more accurate visualization. OK, and so we will see, for example, how many connections we had <clears throat> during the year or what day of the week we are uh, sending more messages, things like that. OK, and at the end of the of the session, we will try to improve the design of the report. So titles, colors, everything that makes the report look uh, better for the user. OK, is that clear? Yeah, thank you. So what is that uh, in chat section challenge form? Sorry? Then one more thing, uh, I think so that we don't disrupt the flow. She has a presentation already set, so we can keep the question. If you have any question for now, uh, let her go in. You can leave it in the chat box, so at some point we'll pass them to us so that we don't destroy the plan of our of our of our presentation. So I hope that's okay. Uh, so Daniel, uh, please, uh, you can go on. So, okay. Thank you. Uh, okay, thank you. All right. No worries. Yeah, so let's begin with uh, what is uh, GDPR, which means General Data Protection Regulation. And this is a regulation um, that is uh, mandatory since 2018 uh, for all the companies that are using and collecting data on their customers. And mainly, uh, they say that the companies, they have to allow the user to download their own data. So this is what we will do today. And also, um, they have the obligation to ask their customers um, uh, if they are OK to receive emails uh, and, and if they are OK with all the, all, uh, all the actions that they are taking about our data. For example, if they want to analyze uh, where we are living, they have to, the user has to, to be aware that the company is using their data. Okay. Let me show you how to, no, I will show you when we get to the demo. Sorry, let's go on for the moment. Then I will show you how to extract the data. Okay. So for those of you who don't know Power BI, this is a business intelligence product that uh, has been created by Microsoft in 2015. So almost six years now, I, I think that we have celebrated the fifth anniversary, but not the sixth. Um, this is a, a leader on the business intelligence market, as you can see on the chart on the right. This is a Gartner uh, analysis. So we can see that Microsoft is leader here. And then you have Tableau, Click, and uh, also Oracle, SAP, that are the main uh, competitors. OK. Um, I have put uh, uh, a chart on the left here to show you how fast uh, the use of Power BI is growing these days. So this chart is showing the number of users of Power BI uh, for the last five years or last four years, I don't remember. So if you if you can see here the first gap, I mean, we have one, four, uh, sorry, one, two, three, four. We have, we have four gaps and they are the um, summer holidays. So during the holidays, Power BI is not used as much as the rest of the year, but at least it shows the, um, the trend of the use of Power BI. Okay. So when we talk about Power BI, we talk about a set of tools uh, that are Power BI Desktop. Uh, this is where you will create your report. You have Power Query. This is the tool that allows you to clean and transform your data. Then you have Power BI service where you can share your reports with your colleagues or your clients. And you have Power BI mobile. Um, this is a mobile app where you can consume your reports. 
Now I have added some examples of reports that uh, have been made with Power BI by myself. So I will explain uh, quickly what is showing this report. So I'm sorry this is in Spanish, but I will try to translate. Uh, this is for human, uh, human resources and they wanted to know uh, um, uh, how much money they invest in their people, how many actions they make, uh, how many hours the people work. Um, they, want, they wanted to be able to filter by, by date and here they want to know how many, how many hours do people work by grade. So for example, A, A2 is the minimal grade and C2 is the maximal, like the, the, the managers and yes, the higher position and A2 is the juniors. And also uh, the work by, uh, by center, which means by, um, let's say by city, as you can see, Barcelona, Madrid and, and Murcia. So this is the kind of, of data that we can analyze and that we can show graphically with Power BI. And this is all interactive. Here it is just a picture, but you can select a filter or a bar and it will um, it will change all the other charts. Let's get into a second uh, example. This one is about Spotify activity. Not really activity, but yes, for example, how many musics uh, have you listened? Uh, how many hours do you listen to music? Um, which, which day of the week do you listen more music? Uh, and here you have in an entire day from midnight to 20 uh, to 12 p.m. Sorry, at what time do you listen more music? So I wanted to show you this example because I had to extract the data from Spotify, kind of the same way that we will be doing with LinkedIn because Spotify is a company respecting the GDPR. They have to to let us download our data. OK, so this is the main, more or less the, the main process. OK. And uh, this is the report that we will be that we will be uh, doing today. So LinkedIn activity from the past year here, we will try to retrieve the connections by date. OK, uh, the count of messages by hour of the day. So from uh, yeah, midnight to 12 p.m. At what time do we send more messages? And here we will we will show um, which day of the week do we share uh, a commentary or do we comment something on LinkedIn? OK. So I just want to do a, a quick reminder. For those of you who are not used to, to use Power BI on a daily basis. So the first thing that we have to do in Power BI is uh, to connect uh, Power BI to the to the data. So the data can be on can be host hosted on a SQL server, on a CRM, on Excel files, on CSV files like today, on on social networks, on Google Analytics, anywhere that are everywhere today. And the first thing that we have to do is uh, to connect the data to Power BI. Once that we have connected the data to Power BI, we will have to uh, perform what is called ETL for extract, transform and load. Actually extract, this is this part here, but we will have to transform the data. We have to transform it because uh, most of the time it, it comes uh, not dirty, but the structure is not right. It's not, um, Power BI cannot read the data, so we have to clean it first, okay? And to do it, we will be using Power Query, which is the, an ETL that is integrated inside Power BI Desktop, okay? You will have a, a clear idea when we will be doing it. The second step in Power BI is to create the, the data model OK, because all your reports and measures and calculation will be based on your data model. So when you create your data model, you have to know uh, which are your facts tables and which are your dimensions table. So the dimensions will be all the tables that we will be used to filter the data. 
I won't enter into the details because it would be too long to talk that much on data modeling, but basically this is this is it. Once that we have the data model uh, properly constructed and created, we can now create visualization, uh, pie chart, line chart, everything, filters, slicers inside the report. OK. And when the report is when the report is done, we can share it um, with, uh, with other people, like our colleagues, clients, or friends, it depends. So we have to publish it to the cloud of Microsoft, and we can also consume the report from our own uh, mobile phone. So now, let's go to uh, Power BI. I'm just checking if there is any question. No? OK. So I will show you before opening Power BI, I want to show you how to get your own data in LinkedIn. So here I am on the main page of LinkedIn and uh, I will show you where to find the data. So you have to click on your profile here, me, and then you go to settings and pri privacy. Settings and privacy. So we get directly to data privacy here and how LinkedIn uses your data. So you don't have to click it, to click here again. Uh, here we can see how LinkedIn uh, is using uh, my data. So my activity, uh, if I enter the salary data, uh, social economic, uh, er, I mean all of the data that, uh, that the LinkedIn is actually collecting on my activity. So what is interesting here is to click on get a copy of your data. OK, so I click here. And then you have two options. Uh, you can download the larger data ar archive, archive. I don't know how to say it. So it will it will include the connections, contact and everything I will show you now. Or you can just download the particular data like uh, invitations, recommendations, messages, things like that. You can see that for me it is in grey, it's not in black because I already did the uh, I had I have already asked for my data today and it can take uh, until until 24 hours to receive the data. So if you ask for your LinkedIn data today, you may not receive it today, but maybe today at the same hour or a little bit later. Um, so once you have choose, chosen your what the kind of data that you want, you can click on the download here and you can download uh, your data. Actually, it seems that I can already download my basic data, but uh, I will use the data set that I have already that I already have so that uh, it will not generate any errors because I have already used the, this data. So I will show you when you click on download, when you will have it, you will have all the CSV files about your LinkedIn activity. This is crazy because this is actually, I mean, LinkedIn knows more about myself and my activities than I do, than I know myself about my messages, connections. Uh, they know what are my searches that I do on LinkedIn, my invitations, what do I share? Um, what else? If I have click on ads, <laughs> incredible. Uh, the skills, education, events that I have participated to. I mean, anything, uh, anything that is in LinkedIn. It seems like it seems that they have access to it, and they actually they they stock the data, they keep it, and they analyze it for. I guess to improve uh, the LinkedIn website and algorithm and stuff. OK. So in our case, <coughs> we will connect to three CSV files only today for the demonstration. It will be the file messages, the file connections and the file shares. OK, so let's do it in Power BI.
Okay, so this is Power BI Desktop. Is there a way to connect uh, to this data via API that will allow to... Uh, this is a good question. I'm not sure that you can. I guess yes, but I, um, I prefer... I mean, I am not sure, so... I, I won't say... I won't say yes for sure, but I think that you can. Um, so this is Power BI Desktop. So in the center, this is the Canva where, where we will uh, create the visualization. Here you have three panels, uh, filters, visualization and fields. The, here we will see the, the tables that we will uh, import. OK. Uh, at the top, you have the buttons to to create uh, your report. And here on the left, you have three uh, tabs. A report data to have a look at your data and the data model to see the relationships between your tables. Let's connect uh, to the data by clicking on get data. And as we have seen before, LinkedIn is sending us CSV files, so we will be choosing this uh, this format. So I get here and I will first connect to connections. OK. And I will make a first example, and then we will import two other, the two other tables. So here we have a preview of our table, and we can see that, for example, the first the first uh, rows uh, are empty here, so we will have to delete them. And to do that, we will have to use Power Query. So instead of loading directly the table into Power BI Desktop, we will transform the data like an intermediary step, okay, to clean the data. So let's click on transform data. Okay, so here I want to remove the first rows, so I will click here on uh, remove, remove rows. So here you can see that we are now in Power Query Editor, okay. So here are the steps that we are applying to the to the source, to the data source. Okay, we will see all the transformation steps here, and all the tables will be on the left. And in the center, in the middle, we see the preview of our table. So let's remove the rows that we don't need. We can see that we won't need the one, two, three, the three first rows. Ah, I did. Maybe I clicked on the on the wrong. Uh, I clicked on remove column. Sorry, I wanted to click on remove rows. Remove top rows. And number of rows we said three. Now we can see that the three rows are not here anymore, and that we have one new step here. Let me check the question. Can we connect this data live with Power BI? Um, I haven't tried, and I I guess we can, but I haven't tried. <laughs> Sorry. Um, here we can see that the headers of the column is in the second row, so we will click on use first row as headers to have it on the first row. Okay. And now one more important important step is to remove the column that we won't be using. OK, so for example, let's say that email address, uh, we won't need it. So I click on remove column. I can remove other columns, but for the moment, since it's just an example, I will leave it like that. OK. And in my in my report, I want to see uh, the number of connections. So if I get back here, I can see that I don't have an index, so so I'm thinking of creating an index so that I can count all the indexes. Because, for example, if I do a count of first name or position, if two people uh, have the same position, even if I do a distinct count, I will have a duplicate. Uh, I won't have the right result. So let's create here an index column from one and then I will be counting the number of index. OK, so now that we have cleaned the data and transform it, we can close and apply. 
and that will uh, take us back to Power BI in desktop. Creating connection, loading data to model. OK. Perfect, so we can see on the right that we have our table connection. It's a bit slow, sorry. OK, we have our columns here. And we can see here, as I said before, um, the preview of the table. I mean, not the preview, all the table here. And here the data model for the moment, we just have one table, but at least we can see the table here. Later, I will show you the relationships with the other tables that we will be adding. So let's go back to the report tab and let's create a short visualization to see um, the number of connections uh, in the time. OK, so on the X axis, I will add the connected on field because this is a, a date okay i can check here on connected on that this is the date uh, where i connected to that person okay and i want to count the how many connections do i have do i have by date so i will take the index here that i have created and i will put it in values and i will take here not some but distinct count okay And now I can see, I will put it bigger. I can see from the beginning, so I joined LinkedIn in 2010, apparently. I did not know that. And uh, I have a peak of connection here in 2015. And uh, I have data until uh, November, uh, 2020, no November of uh, 2020 because uh, I haven't downloaded my data since then. I did it today, but it was too late because I, I, for, I forgot that I had to wait 24 hours to get my data. So what we can do here, for example, because I am not interested of what happened uh, before 2000, let's say until 2016 or 2017, because I was not really active on LinkedIn. So I want to filter and see just what happened in the last three years, for example. So to do that, I can use the filter panel. And here on connected on, I will use a filter type, filter type which is called a relative date. And I will tell Power BI that I want to see the data that is in the last three years, for example. Uh, yes, three years. So I, I write three and here I will choose years. I could have chosen also months or weeks or all the, the options that we can see here. And I have to click on apply filter. And now I can see the data from uh, September 2018, okay? And here we only have two years of data because we don't have the data of, uh, from November, uh, I mean, we don't have the data be after November 2020. That's why we have only two years here. Okay. Now uh, let's try to import another table and we'll try to see something else. So get data, CSV, and let's see what is in the table messages. So here we have a conversation ID, conversation title from who send sender profile, Ah, okay, the profile of the sender. So when it's me, it means that I had that I have sent the message. Uh, okay, to who? Uh, no subject and the content. Okay. So let's turn from the data again. Use first row as headers like we did before. Uh, let's remove, for example, 
subjects and content uh, folder we don't need it either but let me check here we need the count of messages okay by hour of the day so we will need the date here and the rest okay so let me just say like this 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 wait i will just keep date and the conversation id because this is what i will count here i will I will click on remove other columns because I have selected uh, the columns that I want to, to keep. Okay, uh, so now we can close and apply. And let's see, we said uh, count of messages by hour of the day. Okay, we can see in the in the table here messages that the date is only like universal date. Uh, I mean the day, uh, month, year, the hour and UTC, but we don't know the the day of the week. So to do that, we will have to create a calendar table and anyway in any report if you have at least one date column you should absolutely create a calendar table so in this example i will create a calendar table in dax so i will go here in modeling and i will click on new table and i will be using a script from radacad to create a complete calendar table with the year end of your uh, day in months everything that you see here will be all the columns that we will have in our calendar table so from here let's say uh, 16 and to your okay this is okay so that we have all the range so you can see that on the right we have a new table which is the table date and if I go here and I click on the date table, let's reduce this. Now we can see that in the calendar we have the date, the year, start of year, blah, blah, blah. And what is interesting to us here is the day name, okay? Because we want to know, um, oh, sorry, I forgot again. Uh, now here is the, the hour. Uh, hour of the day. So let me get back here. Okay. For this visualization, we won't need the calendar table. We will be using, uh, for example, this visualization. And we want to see on the x axis and uh, the hour. So if I put the date field in the x axis, and here we will count the conversation ID in values. Okay. Let's say a distinct count. And here you can see that we have a problem because actually the column format is not the right format for us. If I go back to Power Query, I will show you how to transform and to get only the hour of the message. So here I can go to the tab transform. And I will ask Parve to keep only the the hour of uh, when I sent the, the message or when I received the message. OK, so I go here in time. In date. Uh, oh, OK, sorry. Here we can see that we have a text format, which is not good. We need the date format. So let's change it to date time because we have both. And we have an error. Okay, let's remove UTC first. So I will split the column uh, by by delimiter, and I will put uh, space. So I should have three column: date, 
hour and UTC, and then I will remove date and UTC because I am only interested in the hour. Okay. So I click on OK. And here I will delete date and date three, date one and date three. Okay, so I click on remove columns. And here on date two, I will rename this in hour. And I want to show you first what happens if I let it like that. So let's go to home and close and apply, and then we will go back here and change it. Something is wrong with one or more fields message date. Oh, okay, yes, because I have changed the name and everything. So let me put the hour here. And okay, this is the problem that I wanted to show you. We have so many rows that uh, we can't see exactly what is the hour of uh, the hour when when we have more conversation. What we want is something like this. I'll show you again. For example, here we can see that it is at, at 9 a.m. that uh, I have more messages. Okay. So what we need to to tell Power BI is instead of if I hover here, instead of showing 10 hours, 2 minutes, and 48 seconds, just keep the 10, the two first character that is 10, the hour 10. Okay. But this time we won't be using uh, the split column or everything because there is actually a nice transformation in Power Query that allows you to keep only the hour of a, of a column that have a time format. OK, so if you remember just before, uh, I wanted to to click here on time and it was in gray because my column was not in a in time format. OK, now I have it. And I can click here on hour and just give me the hour. OK. And here we can see that if I go here, we had uh, 19, 38, 45, and now we just have 19. And this will allow us to show correctly the data in the chart. OK. Here there is something else that I want to show you in case you need it in your own uh, cases is that instead of transforming uh, the column to only the hour, you can actually add a column from here and do the exact same transformation, but in a new column. So I go here, hour, and then click on hour. I will insert the step here and then I will delete it, but because it's just to show you, okay? And now you can see that you have the 19 in the new column, okay? In case you need both in your report, just as you know that you can do it, okay? So let me just delete this step now. Delete. We have our extracted hour. And now let's click on close and apply. Okay, now it's working. So since I'm using the same data set as before, uh, we can say that it's also at 9 a.m. that I have the lot, uh, that I have the most uh, conversations, the higher number of conversa conversations, sorry, in LinkedIn. And uh, at uh, 2 and 3 p.m., which is when I am actually sleeping, I am not really responding to my emails and uh, my LinkedIn messages. And also, I, I am not receiving any because probably my, uh, most of my contacts are living in the same uh, hour, in the same part of the world, I guess. But in the end, it gives it gives me an insight that I didn't know by myself. Okay. So now we will try to create the third visualization. Let's see what it is. Uh, commentary. Okay, so we have to import the, the the table that is called share. So get data, CSV, shares. Okay, let's see what we have in shares. I don't really remember. 
Okay, the date that will be useful. Um, share link, share commentary, share URL, media URL, visibility. The visibility, I know that I won't be, I won't need this column, so I will delete it. Um, share link. Maybe we can do a count of share of share links to see how many links I am sharing. So let's transform the data to delete the columns that that are not necessary. Shares, I will keep the the date column, but I will transform it to only date and not hour. Because here we want to see it. We want to see the which day which day of the week I am uh, I am sharing more more links. Let's say let's forget commentary. Let's do it with the links. Okay. So in ad an advice here when you have a, uh, a field with date and time is not to keep both. Okay. You have to separate them but never keep both in the same column because it takes a lot of space in Power BI and it will slow down your report. This is actually a question I think in the, um, not a question, but uh, a skill that it is evaluate, evaluated in the certification DA100, um, analyze and visualize data with Power BI, the Microsoft certification, because they always want us to know how to optimize the report and this is important to to know that so here i will transform the column and i will keep only the date okay date only this field because i don't need the the time here okay um this i won't need this either this either and this either remove columns Okay, and now let's close and apply. So in the real world here, instead of uh, using the, the column hour in my table messages, I should create a dimension called time and filter by the dimension here. But since we don't have a lot of time, I am doing it from the table itself, but this is not a best practice. OK, I want you to know that. And also here I am using the count of conversation ID, but normally the best practice is to create a measure here and to do a, a count here. I guess it was a, a count. OK, I will use distinct count. Of conversation ID, I ah, know. Uh, yes, this is better. So see, I did it. Uh, I I don't I didn't do it right last time, so here I should do, I should do a distinct count, and uh, I should do the distinct count from a measure, okay, index. But uh, here we have um, an implicit measure in the in the table, so I am using it just to go faster, okay, just as you know it. So now the the third visualization. Uh, we want to see the in the shares table. We want to see the number of links uh, shared. So let's take a distinct count, but we want to see it by day. Um, I have shared in total uh, 90 links apparently, and I can see that in my table I don't have the the field day so this is where i will be using my calendar table and i said before that what is interesting to me is the the field day name so let's try to put day name in the x-axis and see what happened so here here we can see that we have the same amount of share link 90 for each day and uh, every time that this is happening uh, i mean Every time that you have the same value for all the all the items that that are filtering the data, this means that there is a problem of connection. That the connection is meaning between the two tables. Between the table uh, here, you can when you hover the the field, you can see the name of the of the table. So in the table date and 
table uh, shares, a relation, relationship is missing. So let's create the relationship from the uh, model view here. Here we can see now that we have uh, three table. So connection was our first table, messages was our second table. And then I created the calendar a bit uh, too early. And then I imported the shares table. So now what I want is to be able to, to filter the shares table by the calendar here, by date, okay? So I will create a relationship between the two common uh, fields that we have that are the columns dates. OK, so let's create a relationship here. And when you create a relationship, uh, keep in mind just to to check that your relation is, is uh, from one to many and that the direction is from the dimension to the fact table. OK, this is important. And uh, since that we are here, I can also create a connection also to uh, my table connections, okay, uh, with, with the field connected on, that is my data field, okay. So, and you can see that I, I can drag the field from the fact table to the dimension and it will create correctly the relationship from the dimension to the fact table, okay, and uh, from one, uh, one too many. Okay, so this means that in the field uh, date here, in the column date, we have only unique values, and in the date uh, column of shares, we don't have unique values. Okay, and this one for the moment, let's put it in parentheses because I have removed the date, uh, the date column, so I am not creating any relationship between these two. So let's go back to the report. Uh, and now we can see almost by magic that now we can see uh, that the day name is filtering properly the number of shared link. And it seems that I am sharing uh, more on Tuesday and Monday and the day where I am not sharing anything is Sunday and Saturday because these are the, the day where or I don't work or I work less. <laughs> okay. Um, I have more or less 10 minutes left, so now we will be uh, improving a bit the design of our report. And then I will be answering your questions. <clears throat> so just one more thing, <clears throat> I'm trying to introduce some advice while doing the report. Uh, when you create a relationship here between two tables, you actually have to hide the field from the fact tables so that you, um, you avoid the risk to use the, um, the wrong field inside your report. Now we don't see the, the field date, so we can be sure that we won't use it to filter the, the, the visualization. This is important. Okay, so it's very quick to do it. Let's just use it. And actually here in this chart, now we shouldn't use, uh, you, you can see here that we have connected on, on the axis, but we don't have it here. We should actually use the calendar table. So now that we have a calendar table, we can use the, the date, okay? And the, uh, we will see the same data. It's just that now we are doing uh, the, rep the report correctly. Mm, why correctly? Because using dimensions and fact tables is actually the most uh, performant way to, to use Power BI. Here it's not uh, a very heavy report because we don't have uh, a lot of tables and rows. But in business cases, we have, uh, sometimes we have a lot of data and it's important to, to organize it as, as much as we can. <clears throat> so here what I want to do first is to, it's to rename the visualization because I cannot understand what is count of index by date. Okay, 
So I can go here in the format uh, option, the field here, and I go down to title, and I will put something like uh, connections uh, in the last uh, three years or number of connections because I wanted to put this in the in the title of the report. Number of connections. And anyway, since we see the date, uh, the date here in the axis, we don't have to put it on the title again. About the design, uh, design and data visualization best practices, uh, just show as less information as possible so that the user is not confused when he or she reads the report. OK, so for example, here uh, we can see that we have also a name for each axis, which is date and count of index. And this is actually too much because we already know that we are uh, seeing a date, so we will remove this. OK, uh, but just before that, uh, let me just uh, change the font of the title and the background. Let's say orange and also align the title. OK, and now I will go to the X axis, as we said before, I won't deactivate it because I want to see the date. But what I will do is to deactivate, to disable the title here. OK. And I will do the same for the for the Y axis. Y axis. Title. OK. I can click outside to see, and now I would like to to also uh, put um, a border. Okay, uh, I wanted to put a border, but a shadow is is nice too. Okay, something like this. But I can change the the border, just the color. Okay, just gray, so that we don't focus <coughs> on the border, but on the data that is inside. <clears throat> so here we have two colors, which is not really beautiful. So let's try to to change the theme of the report and see what we can have. So this is the current theme that we have. Let's see this one. And oh, this is the default. This is the same one. Sorry. This one. No, no. Let's try to. Yes, this one is okay because it's like the LinkedIn colors, more or less. But here we will change the background of the title. Title, and maybe we can use a, a darker blue. Okay. So now it looks a bit better. We can see here that uh, the tutor visualization uh, have changed the colors as well because the theme is applying to all the reports, not only the, the, the visualization that uh, we were selecting. Uh, so instead of doing the exact same uh, formatting, I will just click on the on the design that I like. I mean, on the vis visualization uh, that I have transformed and I will go to home format painter. And I will give the same format by clicking on the other visualization. And then I can align. Oh, I double clicked by mistake. And when you double click on the Canva, it opens the Q&A visualization. OK, so now what we can see is that we don't have the, the titles of the axis. In this one, we don't have and in this one we don't have, but this title is not really understandable. So let's change the title quickly. And this is a conversations by our the day. OK, this is more understandable like this. And uh, we can also remove the, the Y axis. Here we can remove the Y axis. And instead of having the value in the axis, we can have the data level on so that we can see the data level directly at the top of the bars, which is sometimes more readable. OK, and same here. Let's change the title. 
this is a number no shared links uh, by day okay and uh, here we have a blank value if we had more time we should investigate why do we have blank here we shouldn't um, this means that maybe there is inconsistency in the data that we imported from LinkedIn. I don't know. Um, and we can do the same here. So remove the X axis and uh, put the data label on it. OK. So now the report is looking better. We could add a title. So insert text box and say something like LinkedIn activity uh, in the last three years, but actually something is not right. I will show you right now. So let's put it like this in blue centered bold okay actually the last three years was only for this report if you remember <coughs> the relative date so let's create this filter but on the whole report so i will take the date here uh, filter on all pages okay and here i will do the same relative date in the last three uh, years okay Apply. Oh, it's slightly changed. Okay. Uh, trying to see if we can improve something else. Um, oh, see, now that we have filtered by the last three years, uh, we can see that we don't have any any more blank here. So I guess that the blank was in the past. So. Let me see, since I have a few minutes more. In the table shares, why did we have a, a blank? Uh, do, do, do. In the date field, I guess. No, it was in. Um, this is from the calendar. So I think something was happening between the table date and the shares table. Anyway, let's stop it for today. Um, I'm hoping that you will be able to download your own uh, data in LinkedIn. If you don't, uh, if you have issues to do it, just ask me and I will help. But normally it's from here in LinkedIn. Uh, how to uh, data privacy and get a copy of your data. And then you can just try to do the same report, play with the data, try to analyze something that is more important for you or more useful for you. This was just an example. And uh, yeah, let me know. Let me know how it looks uh, from your side. Uh, I think uh, we have time now for for the questions or for comment for comments if you want to comment or add something yeah. um, question. yes Okay, so I don't know questions, I'll see a lot of compliments. Mm, thank you. Um, just thinking what else I can add. <laughs> uh, yes, I think there is a, a comment here. Temporarily, we can fix this blank using visual filter. Yes, this is totally right. Yeah. LinkedIn Sales Navigator in the classes, you can get to that. You can also get your data from Sales Navigator, if any. 
Yeah, see, I got my phone. I didn't get what you said. Uh, uh, you can also get the data from Sales Navigator. Oh, uh, yes, Safe Navigator, but there's someone was asking about how it gets live data. I know some people use Sales Navigator, but that's mostly those the uh, marketing. You have to be marketing a product for you to maybe want to use that. Not mm. like for a personal use. Okay. Yeah. Then think mic mic find an API. Yes, about that actually I don't know, so I prefer not to pronounce you know myself in case uh, I don't want to say anything stupid. Um, but I will investigate for sure. I am actually not using this report on a daily basis, as you can see in the dates, but I was actually really surprised and I wanted to see what is what was happening in my activity, you know. Yeah, so you got this one for like every year, no? annually, or do this every six months? Uh, I, I think I just did it once by curiosity and it was so awesome, awesome that I wanted to share it. And this is actually a session that I have also made for a Spanish user group. That's why I, I had the, the report, uh, you know, in the PowerPoint here. Yeah. But uh, since then I, I didn't do it again because I, I don't I would like to to do a follow up, but uh, I actually don't have I don't have a lot of time. Yeah. Um. Okay, so, um, if there are and if there are no questions, if there are no questions, okay. So, uh, let's. I mentioned earlier. I mentioned about the enterprise DNA um, challenge. I think I also posted it on the post. Yeah, I posted it. So. Yeah. Yeah. So, you want me to? Okay. Yes. Then. Yes. Yeah, so. Okay. So then I also ask two questions. So um, I wanted to find out maybe how you started that standard Sorry, if I. Oh. Yes. I think, I think it would be easier if she. What do you think? Should she make the pick now? Or uh, I think it's easier that way, right? She asks okay. the question from the audience and make. Yeah, yeah, I need to ask her the questions first about um about her journey so far and advices she has to do starting out. Then we can do the giveaway. Okay, I'm not sure if I have to to do something here. Okay, uh, cool. okay so um, yeah, cool. Yeah, so uh, I just wanted to find out about your journey, like how you started. Um, uh, okay. Any advice you give to those that are starting out also? Okay, sure. So I started to work in Power BI in 2018, so not long ago actually. And uh, I discovered this tool when I was a data analyst um, and I was working mainly on Excel before. And my job was to, to migrate all the. To, uh, to automate the report in Excel, but in Power BI. And I was the only person on, on this department to work in Power BI, so I had to to train by, my, by myself to, to take some training on Power BI, to try to play with the data. And um, I discovered that with Power BI, it was, everything was easier and uh, it was also more powerful. And I was so struggling with Excel to do some stuff sometimes that I really wanted to, to deep dive into Power BI. So at that time, I was actually uh, looking for, for, for Power BI friends <laughs> uh, to talk about this tool because it was so amazing to me. And in my team, I was the only one working on it. So at that time, I created the Power BI user group in Barcelona and I realized that a lot of some people were actually working on Power BI and they also wanted to talk about it, to share something, to ask questions. So it all started from there. 
and uh, at that time also I changed my I changed uh, I changed job. Sorry for my accent, my French accent. Um, I changed jobs because uh, I wanted to work with people that were also working in business intelligence, and I thought that I would be able to learn faster if I was working with other people. You know, because in my team we were in a commercial department with on a, with other data analysts, but in Excel some com some sales person and sales director, but they were not doing business intelligence really, and they were at the beginning, and I really wanted to learn, so that's why I moved to to a consulting company which is Capgemini, and this is still my company today. And uh, yeah, now I am I am learning faster. I, I'm working on bigger projects in Power BI. I can took uh, more trainings and I also got certified DA100. And uh, what else? In February 2021, I got the MVP prize to to thank my investment in inside the Power BI community because I like so much Power BI that I like to share. Uh, the small things that I learn and that can actually save time, you know, to other people. And uh, I am also thankful when I when I watch when I watch other sessions uh, because I always learn new things. So yeah, this is a big journey, but uh, enjoying it so far. <laughs> yeah, I think really good. Yeah, so as we can of the. Enterprise DNA giveaway. Okay. Yes, so you can ask a question to the audience and okay. the first person to answer we get a free membership. Yeah. And so just to clarify that uh, for the audience, please your answers have to be chat box. So that to be the only way we will know who the first right answer. So, uh, good, then, yeah. <laughs> okay, so the question is, um, when I have a column with a format, um, no, wait. When I have a column showing date and time, and I only want to keep the date, how do I do it? So, come again. Again, or yeah. okay. Let's say I have a column, and in this column I have several rows, and each row is showing date and time. Like for example, uh, 20, uh, 19 of September of 2021, and here it's uh, 8 p.m. and eight minutes. Okay, but I only want the date. I don't want the time. So how can I do that? Can I answer okay. that? Yes, you got chat box. Is the chat box. The room. It makes it easy for us to pick the first right hand. Okay, on chat box. Yeah, on yeah. chat box. Okay. Uh, can you be more precise? She need to audibly. Sorry if I am pronouncing not pronouncing well. Change data types and no. We can split date column into two columns. Yes, this is a solution. So high it's not the the best in my opinion. We can you can split the date by delimiter. So date and time. Um I think we don't have the the right answer for the moment. I will try to repeat the question. Let me just let me type in my own answer here. Okay. Do I see the chat? Okay, let's hear your answer then, since uh, it seems you are not able to type. Okay, I think what what you need to do is just to highlight the column, which is the date time column. Then once you highlight it, you go to format. And then uh, you select date because it gives you option. It gives you option once it's confirmed that it's giving you data, and then cut it and enter just date. That way you can 
we can be able to what we just did. What do you think, Dania? <laughs> Uh, I suggest that uh, that I do it in my Power BI, okay? okay. But do you want to ask another question then? And it's very interesting because even me, I remember the answer because you showed us, then you told us that uh, if you want to make it as a separate column too, there's another way. If you want to do it in the same column, then, you know, there's a way. Yeah, if you go to the data type, if you go to, if you are in the Power BI, Yes. Once you select the column, you hit on your transform. Once transform is called, you see the data type. Mm -hmm. And then when the data types are there, there are so many options. You have your date, you have your date time. Then if you just pick on date, then it will just transform it and put just the date, and then the time will be off. That's the different types. So the first, was, first I have to, to put a date time format here. OK, that's what you're saying. And now that we have a date time time format, I go to transform date and date only. Yeah, you just uh, now you go to transform, right? Now yes. go to the date the date type. Click on the date type. Here? The date, no, the date type on on top. Date so date so type date time. Yeah, click on no, the other. Yeah. Ah, here. Yeah. Then you come down. Go, yeah, hit on date. Yeah, actually, this is a good answer too. <laughs> so congrats. Yeah, I was actually doing the same thing, but from here, you know, I was hitting the column and use date only. But what what you are saying is also working uh, perfectly well. So I accept this answer. <laughs> oh, so I've won it. Congrats. <laughs> yeah, yeah, won it. Sorry, it was, uh, okay, so, um, so send me your. You can send. You can send me your details. Just your name. And I would send everything over. Uh, so should I just type to Michael WhatsApp? It's, um, it's, so it's, 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 you know, yes, webinar, webinar, your business just come. My, my today is my actual first time of joining, so I don't even. No, no. Uh, we'll get across. Very quick. Okay. Henry, uh, that you tried calling before today, right? Yes, I've been trying to call you since morning. Then you requested a job. Okay, good. We'll reach out to you. <laughs> okay. So sure. if I over to you, thanks a lot, uh, Dania. Merci beaucoup. <laughs> You've helped us a lot. <laughs> so um, if I yeah. yes, okay. Yeah. So um, thank you so much for this great session. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, so I guess that's the end of the session. Ah. Yeah. Hey, the last question. You know, Hackstar to tell us. Okay. Uh, yes. All right. As for us, you see, you just tell us um, any what, what advice we give to those that are just starting out. For the second question. Sorry, can you repeat the question? Um, what advice we give to those starting out? For for people who start or advice in general? Uh, advice for beginners or beginners? Yes, especially beginners. Yeah. Fully. <laughs> Quel conseil vous avez pour les débutants? Okay, thank you. Um, I would advise the the people who start with Power BI to to play with the data from an Excel file, a very simple Excel file with only one table, and see what they can create, what visualization they can create to see the data in charts to visualize the same, and then when they are comfortable with that. They can uh, they can take a training to know how to create a, a data model. A data model is if you have more than two tables, at least two tables or more. You have to fetch relationships between them, and this is a very important part of Power BI. So I think the beginners should learn how to create a correct data model, because most of the time people get wrong results. And when I take a look in the data model, the data model is wrong. So this is a very important part in Power BI. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah, so uh, thank you again for this session. No, oh, thank you wait, very much. Wait, wait, I have a question. The, you mentioned one Spanish Power BI session. Is it, is it the session is it all in English or just strictly Spanish? 
Uh, we have one in English because one day we received the Reza Rad from Radakad, and I think this is the only session that we have in English. All the other ones are in Spanish. Oh, okay. Sorry, but uh, yeah. You missed out also feedback and the slide at the end of the session. Ah, uh, yes, I have uh, one last slide. Thank you for that. It was just in case you want to to contact me or follow me. So let me just share again. My screen. Yep, so feel free to to add me in LinkedIn. And uh, what else? Can you paste your LinkedIn link in chat for me? Okay, yeah, I posted the link to chat earlier. I'll post it again. Okay, I will post it. Thank you very much, everyone. Thank you for the organizers who invited me. And thank you for your questions and your participation. It's always a great pleasure when people are asking questions and trying to understand and everything. So thank you very much for your attendance. Thanks a lot. It's been a pleasure having you. Uh, so please, to everyone, uh, if I please share your slide, the last two slides, you missed that part out. So please help us go to the feedback form. Uh, so please, you will see. Yeah. So what I is the this is Enterprise DNA. They are the sponsor of this uh, session and also the prize award. What you've won will get across to you. Uh, how, what you need to provide us to forward to them. And uh, we are grateful Brian is also here. He's the CFO of Enterprise DNA. And uh, also, I'm sharing in the link, so it's done already actually. If you check in the chat box, we have also the feedback link. So please let us know what you think we should uh, do better. And uh, if you have a topic you would like us to get a presenter on, just your general feedback on how you know we can do more with the series. So it's been a pleasure. Uh, it's fine. The next slide. Is there something after this? No, there's not a slide. It's just, uh, it is like, okay. it's just so it could, it could right also go for the challenge. Oh. Okay, great. You shared the challenge, I I think, right? That's not the challenge. It's okay. Sorry. So just to announce to us all, it's an enterprise challenge going on. You can participate and uh, get to apply all what uh, you've been learning. You can even try to do what Daniel showed us today, you know, try and do something. Okay, there is actually a task that is attached. Okay, you can take ideas <laughs> from all the different sessions that have been going on and try to apply and, you know, you get some cool uh, mentions and whatever comes as the price from the, from from the challenge sponsor. So thank you very, very much. Just make sure you check your chat box to see all those links. Yeah, and Dania, it's been a pleasure. We are very, very grateful. We understand that we stressed you because now we forced you to speak English, uh, but you did very, very well. It's it's amazing. Uh, I think you speak like four languages there. Three. Uh, three, three. <laughs> yeah, three. <laughs> okay, so I hope to be like you someday. I'm still learning French. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Boku, and to everybody, thank you very, very much. Uh, we are very, very grateful. Some reconnaissance. I hope I'm correct. <laughs> yeah, perfect. <laughs> yeah, so thank you very, very much, and see you all next week. Bye bye. Thank you very much. See you. Bye. Have a very wonderful, productive week.